Saturday was the return of one of my favourite events of the year for music, Synthfest. And as has become standard for me these days, I did film at it, I did another bass player at Synthfest. Now you might be asking yourself, why is a bass player going at Synthfest? I did do a long-winded answer to this last time, but the quick version is, I use a lot of synths, and I love synths. I use them alongside my bass and my own music. So an event like this is perfect for me. Now you might be noticing, I do have my notes in my phone. And that's because, wait on that car going past. <laughs> that's because there's a lot going on there. I filmed so much this time, and there's a lot to get through. So we are going to keep the talking to a minimum just now. I will preface this by saying it's a loud event, particularly the wonky stuff booth. It was really busy and there was a lot of noise around it. We've done our best to isolate the audio and get the best recorded clips, taking direct feeds of the equipment where we could. We've done our best, but it is quite noisy. So hopefully this still covers everything as well as you would hope. So we'll get straight into the first demo and we've already mentioned it, but the first booth we want to talk about is wonky stuff. Wonky stuff make modules for the AE modular and John has been kind of foundational in building this third party community. He was the first from what I can gather and he's also the one responsible for the MIDI module movement that's going on just now. The ones I use in my live rig. And this year he had a few more of those to show off from the MCO1B which is the new oscillator module, the updated version, and the player module which is a drum sample player and a few other little goodies. So. Let's go straight to that demo just now and let him explain what he's got new for the show. Okay, so Synthfest 24. Woo! Um, so we've got an update from Walkie Stuff for uh, MIDI control oscillator. There's a couple of MIDI things. Um, MCO1B. So B might stand for button. It's got a button. Um, which allows some of the functionality to be a bit easier to access. Um, so we've got standard kind of MIDI things, you can play notes. Um, it's got 32 presets, of, of which they, these are some. Um, each parameter of a voice can be mapped to a CC. Um, so we've got, for example, that square wave has, has pulse width. We've also got pulse width modulation on that with the variable speed LFO. Um, sub oscillator, noise generator. Um, so kind of standard things. It's velocity sensitive and you can change the sensitivity. So at the moment it's why not? Which is, you know, if you like if you like dynamics in your music. Um, so the big interesting thing for the MCO1B is it has a poly chain mode now. So we send it the poly the poly mode MIDI message, which is not really used very often. Um, I'm limiting myself to two notes because I've only got two oscillators. So basically each oscillator, if it's already playing a note and it sees another note, it'll just pass that on. Um, so the thing about poly polyphony is you want all your voices to have the same envelope shapes for example. So there's another new one which is not ready, not really ready, it's good enough to demo. Um, which is a, a four, um, four channel envelope generator basically. So it's got the same, they share parameters, attack and decay, or attack and release. Um, so they're completely independent. And yeah, there's, so there's four of those in one, one micro module. So, yeah, yeah. Um, also, it's the, it's the setup of if you if you have them as individual envelopes, like your two M's. If you've got four voices, you'd have to set up four envelopes with exactly the same parameters. Um, 
other stuff is kind of fairly standard. We've got the MCC, which is extracting X. Um, make CVs from MIDI controllers. So here we've kind of fairly obviously mapped it to a mapped a CC to the uh, cutoff of a frequency of a filter. Sort of thing that's useful. So you can basically program the, your voice almost entirely from a set of MIDI controllers. But yeah, the polychain is quite interesting, although you have to be a bit careful with your, how you play notes because once you've run out of voices then no other notes will sound yeah yeah so either do the voice allocation in your head when you're playing um, or you have to wait for a proper poly assigner which will come obviously <laughs> fairly fairly soon yeah yeah oh that's another thing yeah okay that's a new another new one the, the player so that's like a little MIDI controlled sample playback module. So it has eight them they're samples of the MIDI pops. So if you like your Jean Michel Jar, you can kind of get your uh, get that going. Um, and there's three uh, and like with the MIDI um, the MIDI to trigger, you can map it to different areas of your MIDI keyboard. Um, you can also control some rudimentary effects there's a um, sample gap a sample rate like a bit crush and also a kind of a pitch as well so you can kind of have a little bit of an explore around that and you can map and you can map those to whatever CC you like or again like this MCC you've got you set one and then the next two are the next two up so you can chain all these, have different pitches and map to different notes and different effects, different bit crushes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, you can play around and get some... Mess up the sound. Um, so yeah, that's all. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, a lot of interest in the, the shape, the format itself. Like some people not seen it before, some people heard about it. So um, yeah. It's been fun, and I've been running and I've been running the MIDI module off the power bank all day. So what's it at now? 67%. Yeah. So I don't know what the time is. It's been on since nine o'clock this morning or something. So yeah, coming up to four o'clock. Just another advantage of the, the format. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's a, low power. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers. Next up is MIDI Kick, who have brought their ARP, which is. Well, you could say an arpeggiator, but it's so much more than that. It can do so much. It's a standalone device that controls hardware and can control software as well, I'd imagine. And really, it can do so much. I'm not going to get into any more details about it. Let's cut to that demo just now. Well, I'm Chris, uh, this is Minikate, and um, I've made computer music for a long time. And I, when I got into hardware, I just wanted to get away from the never finishing anything. You know, that, that stress of never finishing. I got into hardware, I found myself using my step sequencer on my arpeggiator keyboard and struggling to find a program and try and keep everything in sync um, rather than doing the fun stuff, the filter sweeps and you know, just, just the, the sound design. So I envisaged this box that had four arpeggiators in it, all independent, and I could set the rules about how they behave, and then just leave them alone while I do some you know, chord input and, and sound design. Um, so really that's where art came from. Um, it's four arpeggiators in a box. Each of them share the same common chord, um, so I can either play a chord and forgive the noise that it's making, because in a big room like this I can't even hear myself think. But I've got four channels, each of them independent sequences for sharing the common global chord. I can do it here, or I can play on the keyboard. 
I turned my distortion down a bit. I was doing that sharps and drums earlier. Um, so yeah, four tracks. I've got six synthesizers here. I can daisy chain them to play all six in a row. And it sort of works like an arpeggiator, but not quite. Because I wanted more than just like the, the basic up, up, down, random functions that you get in a hardware arpeggiator. So I made a, a essentially it's come out of playing where you way set the chord into um, set mode, which is where you set the parameters. Um, there's a heap of different parameters that do all sorts of things. They let me come over to this one a second. Um, I've just got a very simple. Let me turn this filter up so that you can hear it a bit better. At least hear what it's doing. Um, I come out of set mode, having set the chord. I can choose things like the time, how fast it's running, the number of steps, the direction of travel, etc. But then I can do things like program how it bounces through the sequence. So if I come into bounce, I can choose different sequence, uh, shapes or bounces and how it moves through the notes of the scale. And that's kind of unique to the way the art works. I can also go in and program those, so I can change, create my own bounce sequences, so a bit like step sequencing. But once I've set those those basic shapes, things like repeats, uh, chops, ratchets, I can change the delay of individual notes, things like that. Once I've set that sequence, I can then modulate that. So if I set the, the number of steps down, I can use a, a waveform modulator to target the parameter. In this case, I'm going to target the note buffer. And then as I apply that, you'll see it sweeping up and down as demonstrated on my LED board as well. To kind of show a visual representation of the MIDI information that's being generated. Um, I've got three modulators, they can modulate each other, they can modulate things like MIDI channels, so you, if you've got 16 synths you can sweep through them all. Uh, you can also create CC LFOs as well, so if you want the sequences to generate um, changes to your sound, you can do that as well. So basically anything MIDI, it's CC assignable, it's got uh, uh, a chord chain, so you can create a chord progression that's automated and it will just run in that way. And yeah, as I say, it's I've got six here going, but it's four of them in a box, and they all run in harmony. It's not the most lovely sequence that I've ever created ever, but in a big room where I can't even hear myself think, that's what you get. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's art. It's uh, I, I sell them direct. I make them here in the UK, and I sell them through the website minicake.com. And uh, yeah, they're available, they're available now. We've been doing it a couple of years and it's going good. Thanks very much for doing it. No problem at all. That's cool. Next up we're going to touch on something that might seem a little bit more serious, but I think it's a really important thing to give some airtime. Something that matters a lot to me personally is people having the accessibility for music. Music shouldn't be something for the select few. Anybody, regardless of their circumstances, should have access to music. And the fact that some people don't have access to being able to play musical instruments is really sad. This demo is very important, I think. It's a new product deliberately designed specifically for people with special needs. And I'm not going to say any more. This is quite a long clip, but I feel like it should be included in its entirety because this is the start of something that could be really impressive and really useful. So we'll cut to this now. This demo is of a product from Arcana Instruments. So my name is Boaz, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm from Arcana Instruments. And uh, this uh, white and black instrument is, is uh, actually an accessible guitar. Uh, eight years ago, I met an uh, amazing student with uh, a big motivation to learn music equal among equals. I had a class with guitar player, piano player, flute, flutes and stuff and she wanted to play with them. Her cognitive uh, is above me and she, have, uh, she has a cerebral palsy. She came with a wheelchair, motorized. And after a year that I tried to find stuff uh, and we try with iPads and touch, uh, I understand, I understood that probably there is not a solution for her and uh, I saw her accurate uh, movement with the joystick with the wheelchair and then we 
I had uh, my first partners and then we thought that she cannot strum a guitar like this but maybe she can strum guitar backward and forward like she uh, <coughs> accurate with her joystick and the, the invention started from this the lights are like six string and there is a <coughs> haptic feeling when you strumming you feel the strings and when she had the mechanical uh, movement when she <coughs> she moved it with her hand with her hand and she feel the mechanism then she can uh, make a progress like traditional instruments and the whole idea is is like accessible guitar for almost the whole range of uh, people with special needs everything here is changing every angle is another student that can play everything here is uh, you can make different handles this is uh, inspired by a wheelchair that I saw different uh, joysticks uh, this one uh, for example is for foot playing with Falco strap and uh, so you still get the haptic element you still feel and it. she still feel it because I can change it here I can change the haptic feeling it can be much harder and if you're playing with your foot you need a much harder haptic feeling because the the movement is longer um, another thing is the method that the, the method here it's, it's not a toy it's not only f five chords like the five keys it's uh, it's this is the the triad chords and so many chords but if you see the first line are the mat the simplest uh, chord that you can make with one finger and it's a little bit more complex <coughs> yeah that. yeah but if uh, if i have a student that it's hard for him to play g minor for example so we're gonna play a minor and i'm gonna transpose it to him of course, yeah. we have here transpose it's like a couple of a guitar and then actually they can play almost any song and of course you can play also uh, I, I think that uh, we didn't play so like a guitar oh. you can play arpeggio you can play uh, different genres and you can also play uh, scales now I'm playing like the white notes on the on the piano the diatonic scale and if I'm pressing here I'm gonna play blue scale so uh, uh, simple to play and you can play like a uh, virtuosic play I'm a guitar player and sometimes I find myself going to a show and play on the arcana and uh, making great music that's what's fun and it opens up to everybody yeah everybody can everybody opportunity everyone can play even uh, we can I, I can show you if you have time yeah even uh, I have uh, students that can play uh, only with their head and they can become uh, bass players and violin players and we have external box for those ones and they can play with switches with different switches and sometimes I have uh, a student with his wheelchair and his uh, he have uh, his own switch switches and then he connected to the external box and then his wheelchair become uh, with the arcana a musical uh, instrument with this with the same method and for this is the last thing that I want them to play because all the thing is to feel the mechanism and then you become a uh, progress in the week and after week you, you're making a progress and your muscle memory is starting to happen like a real uh, player. Like any player but, yeah. but sometimes I have a student that it's hard for them and they have only like people with ALS so uh, we have like proximity 
and it's changing the, the, the strumming like this one All those solutions making uh, in an uh, institution with uh, special education, like almost all the students can learn and make music. Music's available everywhere. Fantastic. Yeah. Great idea. It's a really well executed as well. Yeah. And it runs via an app on, on, kind of based on MIDI. It's, uh, yeah, it's like a MIDI interface. So you Bluetooth. can have different sensors then as well. Yeah, yeah, I can change uh, for like this is garage band I can play like rock uh, clarinet flutes uh, even bass I, player for us people like even me even bass <laughs> you're gonna see uh, the post of us is amazing I gotta uh, finger bass brilliant Amazing, very uh, great sampling, and also we have a website that you don't uh, have to, you don't need to connect to app. You can only uh, push uh, your cable to the laptop, and then you have all those exercises and songs for free, and without any, um, you don't need to connect to nothing, only to push power, and then it's played. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much for the demo. Thank you for your best. time. Next up is a MIDI controller and MIDI looper with a really interesting fabric touch play. Uh, really different, really comfortable to play on. And it also has other aspects where you can put a silicon top on it to play drums. It's so much more than just a basic MIDI controller. And this is from a brand called Embodme. I could be pronouncing that wrong. The good thing is we've got a full demo from them and he does tell you how to say the name properly. So we'll cut to that just now. We're Embodme, we're a French company. We make this uh, instrument, it's called Eray. It's a MIDI controller and looper uh, and polyphonic. So uh, the, the cool thing about it is that it can be entirely configured. So you can really create your interface from the software on the computer and then you know store it. Sliding and sliding gestures. And what's cool also, it's a, the new version. We had a, a first version that we launched three years ago, and we're just about to ship this new one, the, the new uh, E-Ray 2. And we added a looper, a MIDI looper built in. So you can actually record yourself. some uh, analog outputs like CV, gate, analog output for all the modular controllers and synthesizers. So it works for hardware as well, not just with Yeah, yeah, it works standalone. Uh, it can be plugged into a, you know any synthesizer like this or of course with any workstation like we use Ableton right now. Yeah, it's designed both for studio and live performances. Thank you very much for the demo. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Next up is a product that would probably suit me really well, and that's Stomp Synth. This is a modular synth in the pedal format that uses a guitar to control an analog synthesizer. So it'll be interesting to see how this one develops. So we'll cut the speak in there and we'll get straight to the demo from Stomp Synth. Oh, hello, this is Stomp Synth here. Um, it's a guitar controlled modular analog synth. So there's a bunch of pedals here. Inside the pedals are bits of a modular synth, so that's the oscillator, filter, DCA, ADSR, and you can kind of control bits of them, like switch the waveform using the pedals, um, there's sort of resonance boost and things like that, and then um, this one lets you have pedals and route that to CV, and then this thing here is the brain, 
and the brain takes the guitar notes, which are, come through this Fishman triple play guitar to MIDI system, and up here at the receiver, and this guy turns them into CV, gate, all that envelope and routes them and controls all this. So, yeah, that is it. And on this pedal board you can have other pedals, obviously. You can route the guitar signal through all of these filters and things. I've also got another version here, which is the same controller, but in a Euro rack version. So that way you can take the receiver, plug it in there, and then control any whatever modular stuff you want with it. So that is it, basically. Um, oh, no, I should say as well, there's kinds of arpeggiators and things in there. So you can control, you can like have arpeggiators that go across the different strings as you're going through and you can control the filter for instance this filter is has got the guitar signal routed through so the guitar comes there goes through there through this filter gets mixed in and then you can control like the pitch of the filter using the cvs that come from the arpeggiators and uh yeah, so it's combining not just pitch to cv but you can also process the guitar yes 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 yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's brilliant. however much you want yeah very flexible from the sound of it. Yeah, that's Next up is another really cool product. This is from Flowfall, and it's a motion control plugin that works in Ableton Live. So it allows you to control MIDI parameters using hardware, typically a smartwatch or even your phone, I think. Now this was demoed on an Ableton setup, but he also had a wonky stuff setup of MIDI modules that he played using these devices. So again, it was good to see wonky stuff featuring in a second clip this year. Now this I think has future potential to be a great performance tool, particularly for someone like myself whose hands are both busy with playing bass, but being able to use like a watch in the way I rotate my wrist, control filter cutoff for example, this could be really interesting. So we'll cut to that demo just now. This is just taking movement from the sensors in uh, these smartwatches, and then that is triggering stuff inside Ableton Live. So, in this case, any kind of movement is triggering that sound. But also, if I have this up like this, it's got lots of echo, and then this not so much echo, and that's changing the. So it's not working as a plugin within Ableton? It's yeah. So these are sets of Max for Life plugins, and you can just map any kind of movement to anything inside Ableton, uh, including sending external MIDI out to, to external gear if you want. People who have seen what I do, like, well, exactly, right, 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 exactly,
Yeah, so let me show you, let me, let me show you the ones and stuff. So, so this is, so this is sending that many notes out to the monkey stuff uh, in the um, format modulus. And then I've got that mapped to the filter cutoff. And that movement mapped to the uh, envelope release. And then I think on number two, I've got that's just chugging an extra, some extra drums. Again, this is all on that. Yes, so with these, these are just old smartwatches that I've put into a 3D printed case. So I do quite a lot of stuff now where I'm handing these out to the audience and then the audience is controlling the song, which is really good fun. Next up we're going to cut to someone that's already been in last year's video as well, and that was Kongburn. They do VSTs and standalone software that well, this year was actually a looper that works both standalone on an iPad or with a DAW as well. Really cool product and he makes some really feature heavy products. Stuff that's really well thought out. So we'll cut to that just now. Hi, my name's John Hans from uh, Convert Bison. Uh, I've showed Stax today. Uh, Stax is an app I've been working on for the last year. It's an iPad app. Um, it's a VSC 300 audio on uh, desktop, Mac and Windows. So the idea with Stax is that there's a sequencer, a synthesizer, and a four track granular looper. So if you work like a four track before, you know, it has all the kind of classic four track things like bouncing down and stuff like that. The difference is here that those loops that are playing back in the four track looper, they have various different playback modes, so we can play back with a granular engine, or we can play it back with a real engine, or a slice engine. So the granular one, as it sounds, is like an unsynced granular thing you can do extreme time stretching with. And then slice mode is similar to the grain mode before, where it's going to granularly chop things up, but it's all synced to the clock. So if you've got break beats, if you throw like breaks in there, then it's really good for chopping those up. Um, it's like really good sound. There we go. strokes. You can hear we've got two loops to play, right? We've got this chord pattern that's playing right now. And if I use the granular stuff, I can freeze it. I can get to play forwards. Like I was saying, like, it's got that extreme time stretching intention. Or it could go backwards. And then, yeah, you probably want to decrease the density, which is like the probability of a grin. And of course, if you're doing that, it's good for the dollar. So yeah, the idea is that you can kind of record a loop in, but once the loop's recorded in, it's not the end of life for the loop. Like, there's more that you can get out of your loop once it's been recorded. You know, with a typical looper, like, you stomp it in, punch in, record, punch out, and then that's just it. You're going to be listening to that loop until you record something else. Whereas with this, you can really get in there and, like, adjust how those loops are played back. And yeah, like, like, and, like once you've kind of... Once you've kind of worked with these, like, playback engines, you can bounce them down, clear those loops, and just keep adding more and more stuff on top. Uh, it's all synced as well, so... So is this one able and based as well, or is it... No, so this is running completely standalone right now. Uh, yes, this is just running as a standalone app. You can use it as a VSC3 and as an audio unit enabled, and all of that stuff is synced, you know, the loop start and stop is synced. So, like, you know, you can run it inside live, and as well. It's like... <laughs> You can record a loop and drag the tempo down in live and you can experience all that time stretching as well. So it's like, yeah, it's fully like integrated with like sync and stuff like that, you know? So you can hook it up via Ableton Link and have your drum machine running completely in sync with it. All of your loops will be quantized as well. Um, so yeah, tons of cool stuff in there. And yeah, it's available now on uh, the App Store for $19.99 or from our website, kongburn.co.uk forward slash stats for $49.99 for VSC3 audio unit back in the <laughs> and lastly, for our longer clips, we're going to cut to Nobula, 
who very kindly demoed some of their Eurodac modules for us. They have a new module that's piano based and it uses samples of pianos and included in that is a toy piano and they very kindly explained to us that this shell that the piano was in was actually the toy piano that he sampled. He then retrofitted his Eurorack shell and a control keyboard in it. So this performance was actually three or four minutes long and was fantastic. We don't have time to put the whole thing in just now but I'll put a snippet of that in there just now. point we're going to have to start kind of speed running this a little bit just for some time because there's so much more we could be included and I want to get as much in as I can. Some special shout outs go to Resonance Studios. Now they are a studio that is full of vintage equipment, all the kinds of synths you could imagine. It's got pretty much everything. You name it, it's probably got one. And at the event they had a few different options from what they've got. There in person, a Lindrum 9000 for example, and they had an L kit which was really impressive to see. And uh, I finally got a chance to play on one of those, do all the jar things that you want to do, and it sounded just as you would expect. Really cool. This is a place I would love to visit, maybe do a, I don't know, a songwriting challenge there. You can maybe come up with some ideas for me on that one. Another sequencer from Seek MP Error, I think I'm saying that right, I'm sorry if it's wrong. Really great product. Uh, very kindly demoed that and seems like another great software based sequencer, a little bit different. Another software based thing was the Yoshimi synthesizer, again I hope I'm saying that right. This one is a Linux based plugin that can run standalone on a Raspberry Pi as well. Another one of the products that really stood out to me was the Clactronics DIY modular synth. This is a kit that comes as a book full of PCBs and the front plates, even the, the metal housing so your synth case, all of that in this book with the build instructions and you can buy a kit of all the components you would need from Thonk and have this as a full on modular synth that you build yourself. Really great product, turns out there's a mutual friend there as well which is always good to notice. <laughs> but yeah, great product, looks great, very competitively priced as well, it's really affordable for what it is. Something you could take on, on trying and at the end of it have a real functional synth as well. I think this is a great product. Next up are the rooms down below the main hall because it's not all in the one main hall. In those rooms we had Roland who had a bunch of really cool synths with them. Particularly they had the P6 which is the new Ira based sampler which a lot like these other small form Iras, they're kind of vocal sized. It's a sampler. That sounded really cool when I got a chance to play on it. The next room for me was the source distribution room, which has, just to make sure I don't miss everything, Arturia, PWM, Bookla, Dreadbox. Sadly we didn't get a clip of Dreadbox or get to try anything, it was really busy. But I did get a chance to play on the PWM Mantis. Now, it's no secret that I love PW PWM's instruments. I can't say it, but I love their instruments. And what they make is really aggressive sounding instruments. The Malevolent in particular is really quite nasty sounding, but in a great way. The Mantis still has a bit of that aggression, but some really, really cool features added on top. Probably my favourite hardware synth outside of the modular world. 
And then next up was the Yamaha room, which there was really only two main focuses for me this year. One was the CK61, which is a hardware keyboard, more of a workstation type thing. Uh, really cool though. And they did have a DX7, which, if you know me, I'm very partial to FM synthesis. So it was great to see that in the flesh there as well. Next up is the Korg room, which they had the new Micro Korg 2 there, which is really cool to see. They had a few different finishes with that. They did have the OP6 as well, which carry on for the FM synthesis. Definitely right up my street. Electro Mod. Now Electro Mod make really, really nice high-end headphones, but they also had some in-ear monitors there. Dual driver, quite affordable as well, so I'd be interested in checking those out because I've recently just gone over to using in-ears actually, so that could be worth some investigating. Next up, Synth Cables. Now, I actually bought a couple of their cables this year because they make some uh, cables, obviously, that work really well with a modular. There's a lot of um, Euro rack to quarter inch going on if you use the Stomp IO modules, and they make a Euro rack well, a TS um, 3.5 jack to a quarter inch TS as well. So that cable works perfectly, they make a bunch of them. They did have Grogu as well, like last year, which is always good to see, and uh, yeah, I would really recommend checking out their cables. Seem really impressive the range they've got. And then there was a bunch of other stuff that I just don't have time to list here. RME, Nord, uh, Analog Solutions with their 2500 clone, a bunch of other stuff. Teenage Engineering were there. Well, there were some Teenage Engineering products. Bumped into Phil OK as well from Human League. That, <laughs> that was a surprise, but also quite fun. And there was a few guys bringing their own systems there. People who'd brought their own products or their own collections. There was just a whole bunch of Bukes. I don't know how you meant to pronounce that, but the book company, they were there, had a Model D. There's just so much. There was also seminars, which sadly, because of the time constraints I had on the trip, I wasn't able to visit any of them. But you had a Vintage Drum Machine one, the history of drum machines. You had a Sound Gas auction. Sound Gas were also there as well, which is always fun to see what they've got. We also had a Emon at this event again, and there was a booth for that for finding information. I'm always intrigued about the Emoms because there seemed like a good movement going on there for live electronic music. And then there was also a patch from scratch uh, modular uh, seminar from DevKid as well, which sounds like it would have been fantastic. All in all, it was a fantastic event. I highly recommend anyone, even remotely into synthesizers, goes and checks out. Even if you're not into the modular side, it's not as modular heavy as some of the other events uh, can be. It's much more just widespread synths. There's everything from, let's say, a pedal-based synth thing to modular, but also the AE modular format being represented to some really out there different things going on as well. There's so much going on that isn't just the modular world. So regardless of the type of synthesizers you're into, there's so much you could check out there. So I highly recommend going. I hope you enjoyed this recap. If you have any questions about what I filmed, then please let me know. Leave them down in the comments. If there's any products you particularly like, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to discuss everything. I'd love to discuss the show with you in the comment section. So, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit like and subscribe down below, clicking the bell icon to be notified of more content when it comes out. And until next time, keep working on those bass faces.